I told you I play different games sometimes. This is Rayman 2, the sequel that's nothing like the first game. This game has seen so many releases. It was originally released on the Nintendo 64 and the PC, but later was also ported to the PlayStation 1. Then, it was also made into a PS2 game, which is just generally an upgrade from all the previous versions. Then there was a Game Boy Color version, and the Nintendo 64 version got ported to the Nintendo DS. Then the Dreamcast version was ported to the iOS, and then, to end things off, there was also a 3DS version. This game was originally made in 1999, but the last version for the time being was released in 2011, 12 years after the initial release of the game. So, with so many versions, I think it's a good idea to point out that for this video, I played the PlayStation 1 version of the game. Even before we get started, I'll tell you. The best version is the PlayStation 2 version. Before we start, I want to make sure you guys understand. This game is not an actual sequel to Rayman 1, and neither does it lead up to Rayman 3 in any way. These three games have no story relation to each other at all. Not any more than a reference every now and then, at least. Anyway, the game starts with Rayman being captured by robot pirates and thrown into a cell with Glowbox. Why they get their own separate cells in this prison while all the other prisoners have, like, tiny boxes to them? Well, plot convenience, duh. Because you see, Glowbox turns out to have a silver lump given to him by the fairy, Lee. Or Lai. I think it's Lee. This gives Rayman a power-up which allows him to escape. Again, plot convenience. So after you escape, you just run through some stages and along the way you manage to free this fairy that gave you the power-up in the first place. And she gives you another power-up. She kind of keeps doing these random power-ups throughout the game. Then you find out that in order to defeat the pirates, you need to gather four masks, because... Actually, that's not well explained at all. I think this dude's just gonna get some kind of superpower or something. Don't ask why though. Just do it. Now you need to go through some more stages, gathering masks, and give them to this creepy dude and then you fight the final boss. That about wraps up the game. Is this the deepest story in gaming ever? No. But if you're playing a Rayman game for its story... I'm not sure you understand what Rayman games are. The game doesn't look that bad actually. I mean for a PlayStation 1 game it's probably in the top tier of graphics. It's not quite Crash Bandicoot or Spyro the Dragon levels of looks, but it's close. The stage design is awesome. Usually when a game lacks vibrant colors, I tend to complain about it. This game on the other hand uses a lot of bland and boring colors to give an uneasy vibe to all the stages. It makes you feel like what Rayman is probably feeling like. Unsure what you're doing, where you're going, or if this will all be worth it. Okay, maybe that's a bit overdramatic for a Rayman game, but the point stands. This game uses color and design in the stages to set a mood, and it does it well. Music, again, is very good. Not particularly any classic songs in here, but the same with the design of the stages. It makes you feel a certain way. It's not something you listen to on its own. It's almost more of an ambience than it is music. It enhances the experience, and it is used as an actual artistic tool, rather than just adding music, because that's what you do. Altogether, I can only be positive about the way this game presents itself and it's not even the best version of the game. Again, it's great. Basic, yet fun. You can jump. I mean, it would be a bit of a boring platform if you couldn't. But you can also shoot... I don't know what they are. Balls of light? And going through the game, you can get certain upgrades. For instance, charging that attack of yours or being able to hover above lava. There's also a couple of stages where you ride on the back of a rocket... thingy... horse. I don't know what it is, but the controls feel less than perfect. And in the very last stage you get to ride one of these when it flies, which somehow makes it easier and more fun to control. I honestly don't know how that makes any sense. To sum it up all, one last time, it's all good. Nothing major or special, just good. But in a time where 3D gaming was still new and a lot of games fucked up, just good is pretty fucking awesome. Altogether, this is the first real classic game I've talked about since the reboot of the series, and I had a blast replaying it. So who knows, maybe I'll play more good games coming up. Or maybe we'll go back to Disney games. I could also do that. But really, if you haven't played this game, go play it. And if you have played this game, go replay it. My advice, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, is to play Rayman 2 Revolution for the PlayStation 2. It's the most well-polished and complete version of the game, with a hub world and everything included. It also includes more power-ups, more mini-games, and of course, better graphics and audio. 
Thanks for watching my in retrospects on Rayman 2. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and while you're at it, also subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with my newest content. In the meantime, you can click the thumbnail on the top to watch my in retrospect on The Lion King 2 Simba's Mighty Adventure, and the thumbnail on the bottom to watch my let's play on Rayman Revolution. It's a let's play that's pretty old, so you have been warned. The quality is not what you used to seeing on the channel these days, but it's still worth a watch though. Until the next time, I have my vlogger, you have been awesome as always. Bye.